how you doing it's your beer i hope you're all well so i hope you enjoyed that little tune that i wrote for the beginning of this video using the brand new neural dsp archetype nolly plugin so we all know who nolly is adam get good he is an absolute wizard in the studio he's mixed some of the most awesome modern metal records in the last decade uh, and he's also played bass and periphery but some of you may not know, he's an absolutely savage guitar player as well, and that's his kind of first instrument. So I wasn't surprised to find out that they'd done a plugin with Nolly um, that basically answered all the questions um, when it comes to modern rock and metal tones. This is, in my opinion, the ultimate modern rock and metal guitar suite. So if you've seen any of my other videos on the Neural DSP plugins, you'll know that they've done things like the Fortin Nameless, the NTS, they did the Archetype Pliny, which is a fantastic plugin, and now we're onto the Archetype Nolly. Uh, in a similar vein to the Pliny plugin, you've got a collection of different amplifiers, effects, IRs, and just basically, it's super easy and straightforward to use. We've got four amplifiers. We've got a clean, a crunch, a rhythm, and a lead. We've got some pre-effects, like a couple of overdrives, compressor, and delay. Uh, we've got 640 IRs that Nolly has created himself with his own speaker collection and microphone collection that have been included in this plugin. If you know about Nolly, you know he's absolutely incredibly meticulous when it comes to capturing tones, whether it be drum tones or guitar tones or bass tones or whatever. So knowing that there are 640 IRs didn't surprise me, but it does surprise me how incredibly awesome they sound and how useful they are. On top of that, we've got four different cabs for the four different amps that you can mix and match. You can unlink them or link them and, and basically just blend the tones as you see fit. We've got a post EQ section and of course, you've got your post amplifier effects like a reverb and a delay. So all in all, this plugin is just unstoppably awesome. And we're gonna try out some of the tones in this video. 
Before we get stuck into the tones, as always with the Neural DSP stuff, it's important that you guys understand how to use this software if you do choose to get it. So let's have a quick overview, close up of the Neural DSP Archetype Nolly Suite. Okay, so let's take a look at Archetype Nolly. This is the first screen that you'll come to when you load up the plugin. It's uh, already got my settings for the video already going on, but I'll just show you through the suite so you can see what's happening. This is the main page where you get the amplifier uh, and you can change the settings of the amp and so on. Uh, like all the Neural DSP plugins, uh, you can see the format is pretty much the same, the layout, it's nice and easy to navigate. Along the top, you have the symbols for each part of the suite. So we've got the pedals, the amps, the EQ, the speaker sim, and the effects. And then the next row down, you can see we've got your input level, a gate, uh, you can choose between mono and stereo, then your oversampling, which is like your quality, I suppose, and then your preset area, uh, where you can load presets, you can save presets, you can load artist and user presets, and then of course your output. Next up, we have the main interface. Now this is one of the four amps that you can use. This is the kind of, I guess this is closest to 5150 territory because it looks like one. Um, but yeah, basically that shows you the main window with all the different parameters for each amplifier. And then finally along the bottom here, you can see your four amps and cabs. Now that's the coolest thing about Archetype Nolly is that obviously you can mix and match the cabinets depending on the, t the tone you're after. Um, and this little button here links or unlinks the head and the cab combination. So at the minute it's clicked, meaning our 5150 type head is matched with the cab for it. But if you unclick it, it means I can change the cab underneath and the graphic changes, which is very, very cool. Can you keep that linked for now? Uh, I'll show you the four different amplifiers, uh, starting from the left. This is our clean amplifier. I'm gonna guess that's kind of Morgany. I couldn't tell you because I don't know, but it looks like it's that way out. Uh, next up, we've got our crunch amplifier. Um, very straightforward, really. The clean and the crunch have a bright switch, as you can see here. Um, and then your standard sort of gain, EQ, presence, all that kind of stuff. Then we get to our sort of higher gain territory back to the kind of 5150 with uh, again you gain three band EQ, master, resonance, presence, all the rest of it. And finally the lead amplifier. Now I'm gonna guess this is based on the Victory V30 or the Kraken because I know I gave Nolly a Kraken and I know he has a V30 that he's modded a lot. Um, so I'm gonna guess because it kind of just looks like one. In any case you got gain, three band EQ, master and level. That is the amplifier area. There's a lot to get through so I'll try and skim through this as quick as I can but let's move to stomp boxes. This is before the amplifier. This is a very cool area because we've got a compressor, got one overdrive here, we've got a delay that goes in front and then a second overdrive. So it really does depend on what you're trying to do. Um, but as you can see, your compressor is, you've got a little toggle switch between smooth and snappy attack, which is essentially how spongy the feel is. Uh, overdrive one, which is clearly based on like a tube screamer, as you can see, drive tone and volume. Then we've got our delay, this goes in front. So for all those that like the delay effect in front of an amplifier, it's very handy to have this. Um, you can sync it with your project tempo. And of course, you've got control over tone, feedback, mix and time. And then finally, the overdrive two. Uh, not sure what this one is based on, but you've got control over the treble and bass, gain and volume. So very easy. So that's the pedal area. Back to the amp and then we go to EQ. This is post head so this is after we've got our tone from the head we can further uh, tweak the EQ as you can see you've got control from 65 Hertz all the way up to 16 kilohertz which is super handy um, and the other thing is depending on the amp you're on it changes which is very cool um, meaning that each one of these is bespoke to the amplifier you're on uh, and it will remember it every time you go back so that's cool Right, onto the cab simulation area. Now, we all know that Nolly is an absolute wizard as an engineer, a mixing engineer, um, but he actually supplied his own speaker impulses for this suite. Um, and to be fair, he's incredibly good at doing this. So as you'd imagine, they're all very articulate and they're very easy to get the sound you're after. Anyway, we've got four different cabs, as you can see, they're all matched up. 
Uh, we have control of two different microphones and the position and the distance, of course, like all the other neural plugins. O only we're using Nolly's custom IRs for the whole suite. He's also included a 414, which is based off an AKG, but we've got a 160, which is ribbon, and we've got a 421 Sennheiser and a 57, which is a SM57. And it's really, really handy because once again, you can click and drag these mics around the spectrum wherever you want X and Y axis. Um, and just get, you know, you can, can turn off a microphone or back on depending on if you want to blend. And of course, you've got control over the level and the pan and all the rest of it, including phase. Not least to mention that you can also load in your own custom IRs, which is very, very handy if you've got them. Uh, and then after speaker simulation, we move to our effects. Now these are post amplifier, as in they'd be in the effects loop of the amplifier. Uh, we've got a multi kind of spectrum kind of delay, which has modulation and it's kind of spacey. You can do lots of cool stuff like ping pong delays. Again, sync it with the project tempo. We've got modulation, which we control, but then you've got a low cut and a high cut. It sounds really nice. Uh, and of course a tap tempo. Then the reverb, which is super simple. We've got a low and a high pass, and we've got our mix and our decay, both of which together can get some beautifully ambient tones. Basically this whole suite, this is for me so far the ultimate modern rock and metal guitar suite because it has everything that you'd probably ever need to do those kind of tones. So that is an overview of the plugin. Let's crack on with some tones. Okay, now we've had a look at the overview of the plugin. You can see it's dense, so I just want to go over a few tones in this video so you can see what you're in for. I'm going to be using a couple of guitars. Firstly, this stunning Miners Regis Core Classic and my Chapman ML Pro 7, both loaded with bare knuckle pickups. Um, so yeah, let's check it out. As you can see on the screen grab, we're going to start with the clean amp. There's nothing engaged right now, just, just the clean sound. This is the neck pickup. So that's really, really clean. Uh, what I'm going to do is just throw on a couple of effects and show you how it sounds. One thing I did forget to mention is if you double click any of the icons at the top of the plugin window, you'll disengage them. So you can keep your settings as they are. And you'd have to individually turn them on and off. Um, so I'm just going to double click the effects and they'll come back on. So there's a quick listen to the effects, as you can hear. They sound really nice. Let's just turn them up a bit. So there you go, there's a listen to the effects. Just easy to use, they sound fantastic. Um, so yeah, there you go. Let's have a look at the stomps before we move on to another amplifier.
Here we go, this is the compressor. <laughs> That's so spanky. It's great, sounds really good. I'm just gonna apologize in this video because what you don't know is that it's suddenly another heat wave in Brighton right now. It's like 30 degrees. I'm roasting in this room, so if I look sweaty, it's because it's like being sat in an airing cupboard where towels dry. Uh, anyway, let's crack on. Uh, that was the compressor. Let's just, I'm just gonna skim over the other few before we move on to a different amplifier, just so you can hear how they sound, like the overdrive and all that kind of stuff on a clean. So you can get like a bluesy, spanky kind of overdrive out of the clean channel with that overdrive uh, boost put in. Uh, let's do the delay. So it's usable, I get, the thing with that is that it's meant to be uh, put in front of more gain so that it can do that kind of gainy feedback thing that delays in front of a high gain amp do. But generally speaking, it's very useful having it there. Let's try overdrive two. So there's more sort of mid girth and more gain with that overdrive. I think that's definitely more usable in a lead application, but works super well on the clean. Uh, anyway, let's move on. So now you've heard the stomps in front of the amps and the clean amp, let's move on to the different amp sounds. So we're gonna go with crunch now. So here we are, we've got some crunch, bit of reverb and delay. It is worth saying as well that I'm linking all these amps with the matched cabs, and I'll just demonstrate really quickly how different the cabs will sound with each amp head. Um, but we're gonna stick with the um, bespoke cab and amp setup for this part. So this is the crunch. <laughs>
instantly a really usable, easy to play kind of crunch sound. Uh, and it sounds really kind of real, you know, it's just straight up nice crunch sound. I could use that uh, for any kind of ambient finger picking patterns that I do with some of the tunes that I have. Um, yeah, straight away. And, and you can tell that if you put overdrive onto that, suddenly you get into that world of more saturated, tighter sounds. But before we do that, I'm just going to mess with the gain on it and see how dirty we can make this amp sound. Sounds really, really good. I mean, it sounds just like an amp cranked, you know, like really gunned for it. So what I'm going to do now uh, is add the overdrive to it. So as you can see, I've just added the overdrive one, boosted the level, dips off the gain, added a bit of the tone, and this is on the crunch amp uh, with the gain gunned. This is how it sounds. It really does sound good. It, it feels really, really good. And that's what I've said about all the other neural plugins. They somehow, they, the way they capture their and build these digital versions of the amps, they just get the feel right. It's just crazy. <laughs> Like, just the way it plays, you know what I mean? Like, it's as, it's as if I've mic'd up the amp in the other room and I'm hearing it through monitors. It's just really, really good. Um, anyway, so that's the Crunch Amp. Okay, so we've moved on to the Rhythm Amp now. This is based around that kind of 5150 Mark One kind of sound. Uh, nothing in front, nothing, no effects, nothing in front. This is how it sounds. <laughs> That sounds very good as it is, and I've not really done much to it, but for the sake of it, let's put the overdrive in front. You can tell straight away with that overdrive in front, it's getting that purr, that kind of modern metal purr. For the sake of it, let's jump over to the seven string. As soon as it's right here. 
Let's hear the seventh string. I mean, let's be honest, that really does sound good um, with the seven string nail bombs in the bridge. But even so, that just sounds really damn good. I mean, it feels like the real thing, if you know what I mean. Like I've got a 50, I've got two 5150s uh, that I use for recording a lot. And I just and I put a Max on OD8 in front of it and it just sounds like that for me. <laughs> Really, really good. Um, what I'm going to do is add some reverb and delay and try overdrive two so you can hear it on some leads. <laughs> That would be amplifier number three, the rhythm amp uh, using the seven string. It was just, I mean, I don't really need to say anything there. It just sounds absolutely insane. Um, so I'm going to move on to the last amp now, which is the lead amplifier. So this is the last amp now. Nolly did mention uh, that it is quite different in terms of it's quite unique sounding, but for lead, apparently it's really good. Uh, as I said, it's like, I think it's a modded victory from my guess but we'll see anyway this is how it sounds there's no no effects nothing in front <laughs> feels really good. For me, I need some reverb and delay just to feel it a bit more, so I'm going to do that. And whilst we're at it, let's add Overdrive 2. So, Overdrive 2 with reverb and delay. I've backed off the gain on Overdrive 2. This is how it sounds. <laughs>
complete and utter nonsense playing for me there, but it's fun because there's so much sustain in that. <laughs> With the gate starting to creep in there, but there's so much sustain. It's just a great feeling amp suite so far. Every sound that I've dialed in has just sounded phenomenal uh, and it feels really good. As I keep going back to the feel of it, that's the thing for me that's most important, especially when using things like plugins because, you know, particularly for me with amps and load boxes and all that stuff, I usually use amps, but when things sound this good and feel this good, it's so much easier just to load it up and there you go, um, which I guess is the point from Neural at least, that they, they want you to use this kind of stuff because it's just, for most people when you're traveling and playing in your room or just on the road, it's so much easier just to load something up and it sound that good. Um, I'd be very happy with these tones on recording. In fact, I'm really happy with the recording of this beginning of this video. Anyway, that's the sound of the lead. Of course, you can get many different tones out of this. I'm trying to breeze over it all because it's quite a long video. But what I want to do now is just quickly breeze over the post EQ, how I can affect this. So we'll use this sound as a template. Okay, I'm going to turn around, we're going to go have a look at the post EQ and you can see how powerful this thing is. And it works universally across all amps. just how powerful that post EQ is. I was only messing with it a little bit, but you get the idea. You dial in your turn how you want it. You just want to add a little bit more of this or that, and you can do that with the post EQ. Um, mega useful. So next, what we're going to do is look at the IR, the cab sim, or the miking, and all that kind of stuff, because it's probably one of the most powerful features of this, especially considering Nolly's gone to such an extent with the capturing of the speakers that we're using. So uh, what I'll do is demonstrate with one mic first, then add a second mic, mess with positions, and then of course I'll also change the cab up so you can hear just how different uh, using a different speaker can sound, meaning the amount of combinations are endless for tone with this plugin. <laughs> anyway, let's check it out. So what I was doing there was I had the 57 on, then I added the ribbon, soloed them, and you could hear just how different it sounds wherever you move the mic. The thing with the ribbon is it adds that girth and that warmth, and the 57 gives you all that clarity. So what I was doing there was just trying to find a sweet spot on both real quick, where the ribbon was adding the warmth and less of the definition, more just of that thickness. And then the 57 was giving me the brightness and the attack. When you blend the two together and then have control over the levels, Basically, you're onto a winner in terms of getting the perfect mic placement and tone. And these have also been flattened in the sense that they're not you're not gonna um, run into phase issues depending on where the positioning is, because some people have asked me that when using two mics, it's always in phase, if that makes sense. Like the two IRs are set to the same 
distance, if that makes sense. It's kind of more geeky and technical than that. Basically, it works. That's all you need to know. Um, so what I'm going to do now is mess with the different cabs on the same amp sound so you can just hear how different it is. So there is a look at how to change up the amp and the cab combination. As you heard, I jumped between different cabs. It makes a huge difference. What's cool is that some of these cabs, I'm not sure about the speakers in them, but some of these cabs I actually used the real versions of in Middle Farm when we did the Tosca record. So it's kind of cool that they're now in a plug-in format and you can see them. One thing I did do is go to the clean channel so you can just hear how much of a difference it makes depending on the speaker cab. Like if you noticed the cabinet for the clean amp, it was much brighter and almost had more fizz when using a high gain setting, but that's because you want that sort of richness in the top of that sort of high end, so when you're playing clean it's nice and chimey. But it can work for things like lead. Basically what I'm trying to say is the speaker cab element of this plugin is probably your most important tool, because getting the good amp sounds is great, but when you can mix and match different speakers and microphones, there is an endless amount of tonal options there. So hats off on that front. I just honestly really, really appreciate having that level of detail in a plugin like this because I'm a huge fan of speakers and getting different tones using different speaker cabs. One amp can sound completely different depending on the speaker that you use with it. And that's something that's demonstrated very well in Archetype Nolly. So that will conclude my review slash demonstration of the Neural DSP Archetype Nolly plugin. It's been warm sweaty in this room right now but one thing that i've absolutely loved is getting to mess around with this plugin write a tune with it record with it and just get to know it and it's honestly the most comprehensive uh, guitar recording suite in plugin format that i've ever come across and i mean that sincerely neural proved themselves to me in terms of the realistic element of their plugins like how close to the real thing does it sound i mean i went to the nam show and demonst and went between their nameless amp and nameless plugin and i couldn't genuinely couldn't tell the difference it was insane so i know that the feel is there and the quality of the tones are there and having recorded and mixed with them they just they work really well but this plugin archetype nolly having that amount of impulse responses that amount of cab and amp combinations is awesome and i really do mean that when it comes to modern rock and metal tones this is the answer to those questions tonal questions um, basically if you're in the if you're in the market for a suite that will just give you everything you need when it comes to writing this kind of music recording it um, definitely get the archetype nolly plugin links will be in the description box below for this plugin i want to say a huge congratulations to nolly for getting to bring this to the world and a huge thank you to neural dsp and nolly for asking me to do this video thank you all very much for watching like subscribe and share and i will see you all very soon.